Hello YouTube. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to perform the calibration procedure on your CFT-1. Uh, this will be what you will be um, three parts, and it'll be. Uh, this is assuming that you've um, gotten the, your power up check um, and made sure that there was no um, solder bridges between any of the connections, um, and you um, ohmed out the the power supply to ground lines to make sure that there is a reasonable amount of resistance as shown in the manual uh, and you've uh, connected power to your you get power to the control board and set the LCD contrast um, once you've done that and you've um, assembled it you should have put you can put your radio together all the way except for the um, back plate the back plate will be um, will not be there yet but everything else will be assembled uh, for the sake of it, I've, I've already completed um, assembly on this radio, but I'll be showing you as if um, we hadn't installed anything yet. So the first step is we need to calibrate the 10 megahertz calib reference value. Uh, this radio uses an SI5351, a um, phase lock loop um, chip, and it requires there to be um, a, um, no, it has to be able to calibrate a known 10 megahertz reference. So to do that, um, we need to make we need to find that calibration value. The way you do that is through the use of uh, some other um, HF receiver. So for the for the sake of this video, I'll be using my IC705. Uh, but you don't need to use an IC705. You can use any HF receiver you have, uh, and uh, all you an RTL SDR would be a good option if you don't want to spend that much money that you can find usually on Amazon for like about 20 bucks or give or take. Uh, so I've got that on my 705. I have attached this little uh, one foot little mini antenna that I got off of my um, tiny SA Ultra. Just you can just use a piece of wire if you need. I've got to connect it to the antenna port. Um, off to the side over here, I've got a 12 volt power supply and I've got my uh, power cable. And for the sake of this video, I've turned off the I'll have turned off the backlight so it's easier to see what's going on. I noticed that when I film with the um, backlight on, you can't see anything. I'm gonna hook up power. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my transceiver. And what I've done is I've set this this um, uh, I've set this cable to be um, right next to uh, this BNC connector. The um, there's a pin header right here, and that pin header is where that signal is going to be found. So we're going to want to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the menu button. I'm going to go back one, and then go to the calibration menu. And there's this 10 megahertz reference. Um, to edit any of the menu items, you short you press the um, uh, encoder knob. Um, note that there is two options with this 10 megahertz reference. If you short press this knob at this point, it'll let you adjust it by 100 hertz. Um, and if you long press it, it'll do one hertz. So once for coarse and once for fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hit the button like you can see that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm it's, as we can see it's below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the value. If it was above it, then you'd wanna higher the value, so. We're about pretty close. Um, and then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to fine tune it. So what I've done is on my, on my phone, I've loaded a six, I've loaded a sine wave generator app. Um, and what I can't, what I can do is uh, you can do that. You could also just go on YouTube and look up a, ter a 600 hertz tone or whatever. Um, that tone is going to depend on what the side tone of your radio is set to. So if we look on mine, I've got my radio set to CW. As we can see, the CW pitch of my radio is set to 600 hertz. So that's the one we're going to be using. Um, so on my um, frequency generator, I have that. And you can see how it's that's off, so So 
So at this point, if you listen, you can hear that whoa, 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 whoa sound. That is called the beat frequency. And we want that beat frequency to be zero. We want to zero beat it, as, the, as you would put it. So what we do is we go into the one fine tune. And as I decrease it, you'll notice that whoa, whoa, whoa sound is getting slower and slower and slower. And there we are. Of course, I'm getting attacked by ads, but that's basically how you, um, that's all you need to do to um, calibrate the uh, 10 megahertz reference frequency. Uh, when you got your kit, it should have come with a cover slip, a packing slip that has um, a place for you to record this, and I'd recommend you writing this down and keeping it for your records somewhere. After that, we want to power, we want to power cycle the radio. All right, so now we are on to the next step, which is IF calibration. Uh, to do the IF calibration, you're going to want to have um, some kind of speaker. Um, I'm just going to use this Anchor Soundcore Mini. Uh, I actually recommend, if you have the option, use a pair of headphones. It's a little bit easier if you use headphones for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up audio to this. Okay, we got that. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is we need to check to make sure, see where the uh, best point on the IF filter is gonna be. That IF filter is hand-matched crystals, so they kind of will slide around. Uh, they might it might not be exactly where the preset on this is. If you're lucky, it might be that. You might not need to change it at all, but it's good to check you could get a few, um, if, like you could get as much as an S unit difference um, in audio quality if you, um, adjust this. So you got multiple options to do this. One option, and I, what I recommend the best option is pick up a tiny SA Ultra. Um, and I've got a little power, I've got a little cable here. Um, another option would be uh, you can use a Nano VNA um, and just set it right right next to the radio. The, another option, and this is probably the one that most people will do, is uh, take your radio and transmit into a dummy load. So what I could do is I could take this radio um, and then hook it up to a dummy load, place the dummy load like right next to the radio, and then uh, tran and then hit the transmit button and use that as my um, tone generator. But for the sake of ease of use, we're gonna go to the Tiny SA Ultra. Um, with the Tiny SA Ultra, if you're, you're gonna be in the spectrum analyzer mode, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap the screen at the very bottom, there's an option called mode. Hit that, and then go to signal generator. We're gonna. I'm going to um, adjust. I'm actually gonna set this to um, a different frequency. It doesn't really matter what frequency it is. And then I'm gonna set. I'm gonna match that frequency. I got 14.02. And then I'm gonna set my level to negative 90 dBm. And then I am going to hook it up like this. So what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna turn this on and we can hear a tone. And if I long press, I'm gonna enable receiver incremental tuning and then I'm gonna play with this. As you notice, it's getting a little bit louder. You can see about here is, so about 0.06 is where, so at negative 0.06 is where we got about a, we got a peak in volume. So that means we're gonna go about 60 Hertz below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the menu. I'm gonna go back to the calibration menu. We're gonna just go to IF. I'm gonna turn this back on and as I decrease, you can hear it getting louder and louder. That's 50 hertz. Yeah, it's about here is where it's getting loudest. And that's how you um, calibrate your IF. This is the last thing you're gonna have to do, which is 
calibrate the um, power output. So what I've got is I've got my multimeter, I've got a power meter, uh, I've got a uh, Morse code key, uh, and that's and then the power supply, which I have set to 12 volts. Um, you can use 13.8, but I recommend doing 12. It'll make it easier for us. So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, flip it over, flip over our radio. And there's RV1 and RV2. So RV2 um, is the, RV2 sets the um, uh, PA bias to this um, uh, IRF 510, and then RV1 sets the power level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, screwdriver and we're going to rotate them all, them both fully clockwise which sets it to its lowest setting. Then what we're gonna do is I'm going to go into um, the menu, I'm gonna to rotate to here mode, and then I'm going to set it to straight mono. Uh, and it depends on what key it is. So uh, I've got a, a straight key right here. So. so, you know, So we got that. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is we're gonna go into our menu, we're gonna to go to the Cal menu, and then we're gonna rotate right once, and there's gonna be an option called PA OSC, or the PA oscillator. And it's gonna always, on startup, it's always gonna say enable, and we're gonna to wanna to change that to disable. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we're, I'm gonna flip it over like this, and I'm going to hook up my multimeter. Okay, and then I am going to set the multimeter to um, DC volt to read DC volts. And then I'm going to connect the negative lead to ground. And the good ground point is actually that little uh, connector that we've got, the little metal uh, clip bars that we added. Just to make things easier for us. And then we're gonna to wanna to connect this to the um, gate of the uh, IRF 510. The gate of the IRF 510 is the um, one closest to here, so it's this one right here. It's also the one with the um, rectangular connector. So I'm gonna clip it in and really wanna use mini grabbers with this. Make sure that you're not shorting any of these out, otherwise you'll end up blowing up the radio. So be careful with that. So then what we're going to do is we are going to be turning RV2 clockwise, uh, counterclockwise such that we read about 2.4 volts on this multimeter. So I am going to... That's good. All right, so we've got that set. We have removed the multimeter. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna change the um, oscillator back to enable. And then we're gonna turn on our power meter. You can see it's putting out power. Um, we're gonna want to make sure make sure you're in the 20 meter band. But if you haven't changed the band since the first power up, you should be fine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust RV1 such that we get five watts out. And note that th this thing doesn't have this thing's putting out heat, so you don't want to. There's no heat sink attached, so do this in short bursts. Perfect, like that. Yeah, and it gets a little bit warm, so if you do that for too long, it'll overheat. And with that, we are, we are done. We just need to close it up.